I'm actually going to start with you. If you had to describe Ember in a sentence or three words, what would they be? Ember is fierce, family oriented, hardworking, and loyal to herself and all the people that she cares about. A lot uh, more than three words. Just, you said a whole sentence. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Oh! Yeah. That's a jerk. Last bit. This is a jerk. Absolutely. You only get three words, though. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what? That's a fair trade. There you that's, go. that's what I deserve. Yep. Yes. And so, Mama Do, for your oh, three words or a sentence <laughs> for Wade, yeah, what would us. they be? Um, emotional. Um, open. Warm. Mm. Those are great. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Those are great. It's and nice to be warm. Yes. <laughs> and Leah, um, I also wanted to know, where would you say we as viewers find Ember at the start of the film versus where we are left with her by the end? Wow, what a great question. Like, Ember in the beginning of the film, I think she's very much set in her routine. She has her family, and that's all she really needs. She has her community, and she even says that to Claude. Like, it would take an act of God to get me over to that bridge. Or an act of Claude. Yeah, I was just laughing. <laughs> I, I could feel it. But, you know, by the end of the film, after being so closed off and not very inviting to other elements, you actually find that, I mean, throughout the whole film, Wade really helps her, you know, see water people in a different light and also other elements too. She really gets to see their strengths and realize that, you know, people are kind of after the same thing. They just want to belong and they want to feel love. And so she's pretty open by the end. I mean, she has enough courage to even tell her father, like the big thing that she didn't want to follow that path. And that's huge. Because she was very scared in the beginning of the film, but I think it was very masked as defensiveness. Yeah, and Mama Do, you know, Wade is very emotionally intelligent, in my opinion. Yeah, yet Ember is. is a bit opposite when it comes mm -hmm. to expressing her emotions. Mm -hmm. In what ways will viewers discover that love comes in all forms and fashion through Elemental? Say that again. Yeah, in what, I'm sorry, <laughs> in what ways will viewers kind of be able to, to see how love is expressed differently. Like, it's okay to express love in different ways. I mean, it's just one of those things where just, when you see somebody that's so themselves, mm. it's just like, it just makes you so comfortable and it kind of makes you want to do the same thing. Not imitate that person being themselves, but like just share yourself in your most authentic self because it really is, a, it's, it's attractive. It's a wonderful thing to like see somebody just be open and share who they are. And I think that kind of love, that self-love, can only attract like that kind of genuine love from other people. And it, it just kind of spreads that way. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was great. And Jesus lastly, for both of y'all, yeah. while this is... <laughs> every time, every time I, I answer the question. Oh <laughs> and, and lastly, while this is um, such a beautiful love story, it's mm -hmm. also a story about what it means to be that firstborn or that only yeah. child and the pressures that come with that. So tell me, how did this story kind of mirror or was it art imitating life for you guys? And we can start with you, Leah. I mean, in my case, you know, my parents are not immigrants and I'm not a second generation um, immigrant, but they did adopt me from Shanghai, China. And, you know, my life mirrored, I think, Ember's parents' sacrifice in the way that my parents gave up everything they possibly could to help mm -hmm. me fulfill my dream. And that would have been absolutely crazy if like your, your little six-year-old or seven-year-old was like, this is my dream. Mm -hmm. But they really believed in me. And I do think that produced a sense of loyalty and not on their end, but for my own self, a sense of expectation that, you know, in the very end, when I put so much pressure on myself, my parents were like, why? Like, we're just so happy that that you're happy mm -hmm. and like you don't need to live up to all these things that you think you need to be like you're just happy that you're you and that's kind of where Ember lands at the end of the film too and like god I just love my parents and like but you know as we all struggle with growing up like I, I definitely felt some of the growing pains that she felt during this film too when finding her own voice how about you oh man I, I just love that I don't even know, I was just, oh man, I wish I spoke to your parents more than fear. They, they seem so sweet They as were well. so yeah. jazzed to meet you and your parents. They, they were so happy. Yeah, <laughs> but thank you. What was the question again? Uh, <laughs> it, it was just, how is this art imitating life for you? Oh, right, mm -hmm. oh my God. Um, well, uh, you know, it's funny. 
talking with Pete, um, when I first met with Pete and just talking about the movie and we were talking about our, our you know, experiences. I, I came to the country when I was five months old, I was a baby. And my parents really sacrificed everything they, they had to just get over here and start a new life. Like, um, I, I, and that, that we, we share that same, I guess we all do, share this like debt of gratitude and that, that kind of sent, like I remember Pete putting like, you know, you feel like you, there's a debt that can never be fully repaid. I feel that same way, but it's also not like a, like a burden um, anymore, at least. It's just like, you know, my parents, your parents were at the premiere and they- The debt of gratitude, that's a key thing. They were just so happy to like see, you know, this beautiful thing that we made as a result of also their efforts. Um, so we just kind of get to share in like any successes that we all have, so it's very cool. I love that. Well, thanks y'all so much, and I really yeah, love the you. film. Thank you. Pete, I'm actually gonna start with you because the dictionary defines elemental as embodying the power of nature. How does the film showcasing how having authority over our emotions really allow that? I always, th I always took it as, um, for this film, uh, for human nature in terms of how we connect and, and, the, and sort of the ingredients of all of that. Because when we first started these characters, they were almost like superheroes, thrown their, you know, of, of the water fire around. But uh, very soon we discovered like, oh, they could also showcase emotions, the, the effects. And so then it just started boiling down for that, you know, the, the elemental, you know, the human, the elements of our human nature. I love that. And Denise, while this is a love story between Ember and Wade, it is also a story about the pressures that come along with being the firstborn or the only child. Why is it, why was it important to highlight in this highlight that in this film? Um, I think um, it it sort of started with you know Pete's uh, experience with his family and just uh, realizing how much uh, our parents sacrificed for us and. Um, and how much we sort of, we, we owe our family in, in terms of appreciating their sacrifices and contributions to, to, to making our lives what they become. Absolutely, and at the end of the day, this beautifully depicts the possibilities that await us when we step outside of our comfort zone. So tell me, how was bringing this story to life a di direct reflection of your, your personal journey? Yeah, I, the, I, when I was growing up, you know, like we had a lot of pressure for, from our family to marry within our culture, a marry Korean. My grandmother's dying words were like, marry Korean, and then she you know, passed away. And uh, um, I fell in love with someone that wasn't, and uh, that created a lot of culture clash. And, uh, um, but slowly through that relationship, even though there, there was a lot of sort of, you know, misunderstandings and disconnections, um, through love and really empathy, did that heal everything and sort of unite, and you know, my, my family now, we all love each other and it's all healed, but that was a big piece of it. Yeah, and what about the storyline between Ember and Wade? Um, they both showcase love differently. How do you hope that resonates with viewers? Um, I think that um, hopefully we, they can identify with the characters and um, I feel uh, that we all, that, that just it's so how important it is to sort of open your heart to everyone around you, um, yeah. Yeah, and speaking of just opening your heart, um, it really pulled on my heart strings because um, the film also touches on the immigrant experience, so specifically as it pertains to maintaining all of those family customs that you touched on while still being open to others who may be different. What, what was the reasoning behind like really painting the full picture of that? Well, growing up, um, I grew up in New York, and uh, so much of it was, you know, either trying to fit in or making, you know, defining what your cultures were. And uh, um, uh, growing up with that, you know, at first I didn't really understand it, but as, you know, I saw my parents interact, could I see the real value of the richness of that diversity and how it sort of really did make us all better, that connection, you know, made our community lives better. You know, and uh, you know, through food, through all the traditions, it just made everything really um, um, rich and exciting. And uh, um, as as cliche as that sounds, it really moved my family forward in so many different ways. Yeah, and Denise, like from beginning to now, people are about to watch this film and really enjoy it. What was the most exciting part of this journey for you? 
Wow. Um, I mean, it's just, it's honestly just been the entire journey from beginning to end. Um, what was exciting is, is getting a group of people together that felt passionate about the project, that there were a lot of people at Pixar that personally connected to the story. We have a lot of people at the studio that are have a similar background to Pete. They're first or second generation immigrants. So for me, that was what was most rewarding, uh, hearing their stories and then seeing those stories that they're infused in, in the film. And so that really does, is incredibly gratifying. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been the most challenging thing I've ever done, but also I would say the most gratifying, the thing I'm most proud of having done. Yes, and how about you? How do you feel? Yeah, uh, the same. I mean, like, you know, this has been a love letter to our parents. And so, you know, uh, ever since this thing started, it was all about trying to understand them more and make those connections and really appreciate all the sacrifices that they had made. And uh, um, as this film was going, I couldn't agree more. Some of the stories that we got from our coworkers, we tried to reflect in the film. So anytime I watch the film now, I'm always thinking of their stories mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. we all were really, really, you know, sincerely trying to respect and honor all of that. Yes, well, hats off to y'all. It's an amazing story and I really enjoyed the film. Thank you. Thank you, Shani. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.